Hi, guys. All right, here we go. Look, this talk is not, see? Oh, but my speaker notes are missing, so we're going to wing it. Why are you here? I don't know. It's 4.30 on a Saturday. You could be anywhere else. It's LA. Why are you here? Like, because you want to learn how to work in WordPress, right? You want to level up. Y'all went to a session earlier about, like, climb the food chain or something, right? And then you heard Steve tell you how he survived 20 years in tech, not in WordPress, but in tech. No one survived 20 years in WordPress yet. Just so y'all know, it can still be done. So welcome to the WordPress Superhero Academy. We're going to take you from zero to hero in 30 minutes flat. It's going to take us five years, though, really. All right, so this is really just like get, wrap your heads around this. If you're new to freelancing, if you're new to WordPress, if you're launching a new career, if you want to go be an actor, we're in LA. It's going to take you all about five years to muck that out. First thing you're going to do is start doing stuff. Realize how much of it you don't know. You're going to break a lot of things, and you're going to have to figure it out. You're going to go learn. You're going to spend your first year learning what the heck is WordPress. Somebody said earlier, a great Google search is how to WordPress. <laughs> I haven't looked it up yet. I'm going to later, though. All right, doing and networking. Second year, start building your community. Start getting coming to WordCamps. Y'all are here. Be part of the crowd. Get up on stage. Give a talk about how much you don't know because you're only in your second year. People love it. Seriously. Look at me. Then network, get involved, join your local WordPress meetup, your local WordCamps, that kind of stuff, right? Third year, you're actually going to start making money. The first two years, you don't make any money. Sorry. You just don't, unless you're really lucky, but most of us don't. So you're going to be making money. Making money means you're taking vacations with your laptop and your iPhone and your iPad. <laughs> you don't really take vacations the third year. You just think you do, because most of us are freelancing, right? So we're like, we're going on vacation with like the tech box in the back. The fourth year, you actually get to live. You actually get to go on vacation with just your iPhone or your Android. You know, you don't have to have everything with you. You might have a couple people working underneath you. You might have, you know, a team that can carry your projects when you're not, you know, you want to take a break and go to, I don't know, Disneyland for a week or something. And then uh, the fifth year, guess what? It's time to level up. You're going to rinse, repeat, and elevate. You're going to start learning. So like, for example, if you were a developer and you learned your HTML and your CSS, right? You got that down. You know how to like, you got front page, Microsoft front page down. You know that stuff, like the bad boy. You can dream weave anything. Then you're going to keep working. You get your job. You make some money. Maybe you learn PHP. Maybe you learn back end. Maybe you become like a full stack developer. You get all the way to here and you're like, I'm set. I got a job at an agency making like five figures. Because, you know, until then you've only been making five figures. So guess what? You got to go all the way back to the very front because now everything is being built in JavaScript. So all your HTML and CSS is like, whatever. My grandpa did that, right? So you have to do the whole thing all over. You start back at JavaScript and you realize you don't know how to do anything in JavaScript. You know, you're like yelling at it and throwing your computer across the room. So then you've got to go back to networking to get a computer because you're broke. That's where crowdsourcing comes in. Where's the give, guys? How do you think those came? That right? You're like, start over. No, I'm just kidding. So career fields in WordPress, what can you do? Where can you work? Who works remote? Who all is a remote worker? The rest of y'all are in offices? Sorry. You're in an office? You're remote? Good. Okay, cool. Most of us, well, most of the people I talk to are remote. This microphone's really awkward, sorry. Let's see. Let's say you want to work in remote. You've got automatic, 10 up, uptrending, XWP, human made, modern tribe, theme foundry, <coughs> elegant, blah, 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 blah. There's, there's actually so many remote agencies now, remote company. You can work, you don't ever have to go back to an office. Who does not ever want to go to an office again? Right? I don't either. Exactly. Well, some of them can feel like offices, but you still get to work in your pajamas. Uh, if you want to work in a traditional office with WordPress, you got WP Engine. They're in Austin. You know, they're not really remote. Mashable.com. They have really cool offices in New York City. Go for it. Uh, New York Times. That's a WordPress install. TED.com is a WordPress install. You could go work on their blog. I have a friend that built that blog, so you know you could do it. Uh, so many companies all over the world. That's pretty like broad. I get it, but. Career fields. So you don't want to know how to, so you don't code. I don't want to code ever again. I built stuff in code. I hate it. Um, I put those in bold, but you can't really tell. But things you can do where you don't have to know code, marketing, sales and account managers, project product management, social media management, content creation, content management. 
small business ownership, right? I have a friend who owns a business. He makes a lot of money. He doesn't know how to code a thing. But he knows how to hire people. He's very good at that. Product developer, theme plugin developer, front end designer, back end designer, UI UX, you know, training and development. You do need to know code to do training. You don't have to know JavaScript, but you need to at least be able to communicate, you know, what it's doing and, and then you know who to ask if anything's great. Systems engineer, engineering, technical support. Those things are for more of the technical minded. So if you look at the it's kind of like you get your introverts and your extroverts. Those are your career fields in WordPress. Um, I'll tell you, project managers are hot right now. Who does project management? You could literally have, like in six months, you could be working for yourself and turning away jobs. There's so, there's this huge need for project management in WordPress right now, it's crazy. That's what I do. And a couple of years ago I thought, oh, I'll never be able to work for myself because how can you support yourself managing other people's projects? Well, you can, I promise. Um, content creation, that is so hot right now and it's gonna stick around, it's gonna grow. So if you write well, who's a writer? Who owns a company who needs a writer? See, it's growing. Like through two years ago, you wouldn't talk about content, right? You wouldn't talk about hiring someone to write content two years ago. You would have just done it yourself, like tried to make it work. Now it's a big deal. Gotta get found. So there's, this is like, this will be online later, but the point is that it's basically an open field for career development in WordPress right now. So if you wanna change your career, if you wanna go a different direction with your life, you can do it, you're in a good place. It's a great time. WordPress isn't going anywhere. People are, you know, oh, what's the next thing that's gonna knock? We own, like, well, I'm sorry, own's the wrong thing to say. We run 20-something percent of the web. That's not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, here's a little inspirational quotes for y'all. So Matt Mullenweg gave this really, really great keynote address to Joomla a couple years ago. It's really fascinating. If you wanna know the history of WordPress, I highly recommend this right here is the link to it. It'll be online later. It's weird to say go watch the Joomla keynote address, but it's really good because he gives a 10 year overview of how WordPress grew and it's really great. And he actually said there was a point in life where he didn't know what patches or commits were. I can't do a patch or commit, but I know what they are. I wouldn't even bother trying, it'd be a waste of time, but I can tell my friends in WordPress, hey, this is broken. And then they fixed it, like the other day, there was something broken on WordPress.com's blog, so I just said, hey, cat, guess what? And then it's fixed, that's kind of cool, right? That's legit, that's the core commit, sort of. <laughs> not really. <laughs> not really, I'm just kidding to all the core developers, I'm not making fun of y'all. All right, but that's photo Matt. I mean, he's like, you know who Matt, y'all know who Matt Mullenweg is, right? Okay, good, just wanna make sure. Are like, who is that guy? So Jake Goldman runs this company called Tinup, right? Y'all know that? It's a big company. A couple years ago, it wasn't quite as big. And a couple years before that, it was only three people. In like four years, they've got like 200 something employees. It's ridiculous. And here's what he told our friend over at Matt Report. There's real opportunity to build healthy businesses and innovative solutions in the WordPress space but it's not a gravy train, it's a lot of work. You're gonna work your butt off. Remember those five year, that five year steps? You got all five years of hard work ahead of you. Fun work, but hard work. Who knows Carrie Deals? She's awesome. She's a fun lady. All right, she was actually on her own for a long time. She just recently joined Crowd Favorite. She says that building genuine relationships and contributing to the WordPress community can strengthen your business and elevate your reputation. Instead of working against your competitors, find ways to creatively collaborate with them. She gave a really great talk at WordCamp San Francisco in 2013. It's one of my favorite talks on WordPress TV. Very inspirational, very fun. What did she say? She said something inappropriate in there that's super funny. Right, her talks are always fun to listen. If you get a chance to hear Carrie talk live, go, I mean, at a WordCamp, go, she's worth it. Paul Clark, he's my first boss in WordPress. He's a really great guy. I worked with him at a little agency called Brainstorm Media, which Tenup bought shortly thereafter. And he has a really great talk on, that he gave to TEDx Anchorage, and then he gave it again at WordCamp Portland a couple years ago, and it's basically how to change your life. If you're in a rut and you wanna change your life, you can do it. He, he tells you about when him and his wife were younger, in their early 20s, 
and they were paying rent and they were paying bills and they had you know all the responsibilities of adult life which is you know not always fun um, they wanted to go to Thailand and so they did in six months they had completely rearranged their entire life so they owned nothing they didn't even own a mailbox and they took off for um, Thailand lived there, built his first WordPress system with pods, uh, using the pods framework. Um, it's a system that is actually changing lives and shaping government in Burma. It's a very cool system. It's not, it is built on WordPress, but it's not a blog. It's, it's a, like, it's hard to explain. You'll have to watch the talk and, and go uh, check it out. If you are trapped in your life, you can change it. I mean, it's not easy. But WordPress does offer that opportunity. You know, again, you can go back to the list of career options, start looking online. These are practical, this is practical information. This isn't like, oh, I'm going to give you goosebumps or anything. But go online, start researching remote WordPress jobs. Start reading through the job listings. Start highlighting what your skills are, highlighting the skills they're looking for, and then start filling in the blanks. And it works. It's pretty cool. It's Pretty cool. So this is Lucinda Brown. Who knows Lucinda? Look, there she is. <laughs> so I needed one more uh, picture and quote because I took somebody else out because I don't like them anymore. No, just kidding. <laughs> that's not it. They're, they don't work in WordPress anymore. So I thought that's kind of weird, right? Grow your career with WordPress even though they left. Um, so I loved what I said, Linda, I need, like, or Lucinda, sorry, I don't even know your name. That's really rude. No, I said, I need a quote. Do you have something inspirational to say? And she was like, uh, yeah. So we talked, and this was what she said, and I love it. You know, in the end, it's worth it. Uh, working for yourself allows you to figure out what you love without traditional constraints. The longer you're in business, the larger the problems you get to solve. So don't quit. Every step requires some risk and a commitment to yourself and your own personal growth. So you can actually catch up with Lucinda at the after party tonight. So, you know, like, how cool is that? This is the magic of WordCamps. Needed an inspirational speaker, and look, there she is. Poor Lucinda. She survived talking to me. All right, guys. Y'all might want to write this down. This is the last flowchart you will ever need, and this is exactly how you build your career in WordPress. All right? Do you have a problem? <laughs> Bridget, I can't talk when you're laughing like that. It's too, it's too contagious. Okay, can you do anything? Now, this is the G-rated professional version of the slow chart, and later at the after party, I'll tell you what, what my boss at the time said. You absolutely cannot put that in a slide. Um, can you do anything about it? Yes. Okay, just go do it. Good God, stop talking about it. And then, no, we'll find someone who does. How do you find someone who does? You tweet it out. You put it out in the universe, and the response will come to you at the right time. Who agrees with that? Look around. Just look around. Not even just Twitter. Just put it out there. What do you need? I needed a career change. I went through a divorce. I had to have a career change. You can't really like be a stay-at-home mom when you're a single mom anymore. That doesn't work. It does, but people don't like supporting you, so you have to kind of like dig yourself out of that. So I thought, hey, I have a problem. What can I do about it? I can get a job. I can go back to school. Going back to school. <laughs> so I decided to get a job. So I was working for this startup in Austin. And uh, it was real squirrely. But it was fun. It was my first startup. And um, I can't, how did this happen? I was running a job board for work at home job seekers. It was called Jill's Jobs. And I got this email at like 3 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the morning from Paul Clark. He's looking for an office manager. You know, he runs a remote office. He was running uh, Brainstorm Media. They did high-end WordPress installations. And I wrote him back. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I work at home. I work for a bootstrapper who, who's in Amsterdam. He didn't care when I work. And um, so I wrote Paul Clark back and said, um, yeah, it's okay. I've, you know, I had to vet him. So I had to go like stalk him down online. Like, look at this guy on Twitter. Is he for real? Oh, look at this guy on LinkedIn. Oh, he's kind of, all right, who's this guy? So I wrote him back. I vetted you. This, you know, I can tell that you're a real business. Um, your job listing could use a little content. Revisions, would you like some help with that? You know, and I have a couple people in mind who are on the backside of Jill's jobs who would be a good fit for your, you know, who you might want to talk to. And uh, he wrote back, it was 3 o'clock in the morning, he wrote back, do you want a job? 
And that was a nice boilerplate. And I said, no, that's offensive. That was not a boilerplate. I don't use boilerplates. That was legit from my heart. And then he said, no, do you really want a job? I said, no, no, I'm fine. I'm happily employed. Well, we started stalking each other online, became good friends. And um, a couple weeks later, he said, why don't you go to WordCamp Austin? I was like, WordCamp? That's weird. What is that? I've been using WordPress forever, but I didn't know about WordCamps. And he was like, oh, it's total geek fest. I was like, I like geeks. So I went, and I just sat and listened. And so I heard Carrie Dill's talk. I heard Chris Lemma talk. I heard Chris Wigman talk. I mean, these really important figures in the WordPress community. No, I didn't know who they were. I didn't care, really. But they're really smart, really, really smart people in the WordPress community, really doing really cool things with that blog that some of our clients wrote on. That's how I looked at it. And I was totally blown away. I had no idea. And so that is how I started working in, work in WordPress. So I, Paul said, how was WordCamp? I'm like, wow, that's where all the brains have gone to. You know, that's where all the smart people are. I totally want to be around smart people. I like smart people. And um, he said, well, let me know when that job, when that startup fails, let me know. And I was like, oh, ha, ha, you're so funny. Well, two weeks later, <laughs> not even joking, Jim from Amsterdam says, I've decided to withdraw funding of the bootstrap. Good luck. Oh, that's cool. All right. No big deal. So then I, Paul, I had asked uh, Paul and Taylor to design something for Jill's jobs, and Taylor called and said, uh, are we still doing that infographic for work at home moms? I'm like, oh yeah, no, that company's dead. He's like, whoa, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm chilling out by the pool with the kids. And he's like, well, okay, hang on, are you gonna work? I'm like, no, I'm gonna chill out by the pool with the kids. So he goes, hang on, I'll, I'll call you back in a few minutes. So then Paul calls and Paul's like, I heard you were free. I'm like, I'm not, I'm busy suntanning. And <laughs> he said, how about if I show you what this really cool tool is called Basecamp and how you can, you know, like put it on your phone and you can still project manage from, you know, the pool. <laughs> All right, whatever. So that's how I started working in WordCamp, in WordPress. And then I went to WordCamp San Francisco for the first time, still didn't know who anybody was, didn't care, and just introduced, you know, Paul to everybody. Had no idea, like, how obnoxious I was being at WordCamp San Francisco, but you know, it is what it is. So if you're thinking, you came to WordCamp today to kind of get some help with your website or to figure out what this WordPress thing is, and you got a little inspired. You're like, maybe that WordPress.com thing is real. It's kind of big. There's some really smart people here. I'd like to work in WordPress. You could totally do it. Who came today not knowing what the heck they were getting themselves into? Like one person is brave enough to raise his hand. I'm with you. I'm totally with you. See, two. We've got two. It's like an auction. <laughs> Who wants a job? <laughs> just kidding. Speaking of that, no, I'm just joking. All right. Who's responsible for their lives? You are 100% you are responsible. No one is going to hand you a job in WordPress. No one is going to come up to you, well, I guess unless you're Nason, and say, hey, I would really like for you to come work in Washington, D.C. with us and build a new government. No one is going to ever say that to you, I promise. There are some rock stars in the WordPress community. There are some really, really, really smart people, like geniuses, doing really amazing things. Most of us are just normal people, wanting to put food on the table. Maybe we want to go to Fiji one day. Maybe we want to do that in our pajamas on our couch. There's nothing wrong with this. It. legit, right? Right? Right, Mike? See? I need some feedback, guys. Y'all are killing me. Y'all need to wake up. We're going to do the hokey pokey in a minute. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Try to start the wave. I know it's a long day, right? And then you got to listen to me babble for 40 minutes. Hey. hey. <laughs> wow, this went a lot faster than I thought it was going to, but whatever. That's a little bit about me. That's just a little bit. I don't do a lot of crap. So. Project manager at ServerPress, those are really great guys. Who knows what ServerPress is? Woohoo! Yeah, hello, everybody else go pester Greg. <laughs> <laughs> project manager for Plain. This is what I'm telling you, like you can find jobs doing project management without working for a company and selling all your time away. Um, this is where it comes back to networking, right? Year two, networking. So networking, meet people, go to WordCamps, 
sit around tables at WordCamp after parties, which you think, this is so dumb. What's the point of being here? Because you have to make money, and those people have money to give you. Oh my God. <laughs> well, all of them. Some of them want to also make money. But so, you know, plain, plain. Did you get, who, who has ever used the plugin called Get Barley for WordPress? It's front end editing. Yeah, various. So you've got it. No? All right. Well, those are the guys behind that plugin, and they're really awesome. But like, that was another like random phone call. Hey, we heard you're a remote, you know, independent project manager. We have 15 projects on our plate. We need help. Could you come help us? Oh, okay. Then they're like, could you please never go away? Okay. <laughs> that works. Uh, I started my own agency with my friend Cindy and my friend Tricia at Codebrain Media. And when I say I started my own agency, I started you know, asking them to do things, and then they do them. I don't make any money at Code Brain Media. That is all just for Cindy and Trisha to have a place to work. It's just women. We like having a place. I don't know if I should say this on W, on whatever. Anyway, just having like a, a girly time, you know, like girls chat hour. It's not like we don't like guys in there, but I mean, some things you just can't talk about in front of guys. I'm so going to get into Can y'all edit all of that out? <laughs> <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter. You, what? I can edit the Thank you. You are my new favorite person in WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I'm also a mom and partner. That's my blog. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. So here are the two most important links. If you're looking for remote work in WordPress, I update this radio3.io feed pretty regularly. Um, I can annoy a lot of people on Twitter when I kind of get into a, like, I'm going to post 30 jobs this morning. But I find jobs, I share them, go forth and make money. I don't make any money from sharing those links with you. I'm not a recruiter. I don't work for a recruiting agency. I have a lot of friends who are, you know, headhunters. If you want a connection, I can get you that. But um, I don't make money off that. It's just something that I enjoy sharing with people and helping. I love hearing when my friends tell me, I landed a job because of that link you shared, or I landed a job because of that interview I got, or thank you for helping me with my resume, or whatever. It's just fun. I like seeing people excel and, and you know, achieve. It's cool. Um, Greg really wants, Greg, raise your hand. He really wants you to go to that link, wclax.reviews, and tell him how awesome WordCamp LA was. All right? Can y'all do that? Is it live right now? Yeah. yeah. All right, definitely like, feel, free leave, feel free to go do it right now. Leave feedback. Leave feedback. All right. Give some love. Yeah. So that's it. That's my big speech. High energy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, y'all want to see something really funny? I was going to be really awesome and show y'all, I have to show y'all what I started doing. Just so that y'all will feel like I gave y'all my best foot forward. Oh yeah, I am from Texas. Who else is from Texas in here? No, you, you left. <laughs> You're moving there next month? Where to? Uh, Houston. Okay. Are you sure? <laughs> All right, that was cool. All right, where else is everybody, everybody else from LA? San Diego. Ooh, San Diego, Orange County. Orange County. So I came out here because Server Press said if I come and give a talk, they'd take me to Disneyland. So I got to go to Disneyland on Thursday. So everybody, please go by and tell Greg, thank you for taking Sarah to Disneyland, all right? All right. Do you guys have any questions, anything? All right, cool. What's up? What's that the Oh, I think that's going to be my next talk, is like how to be the base camp professional rock star you didn't know you were. You basically just, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, hey, I need a blog post written, you know, or hey, I need this code pushed out, or hey, this client wants an update on this page. And then you make sure that the developer has the information they need and that the client's wishes have been communicated to the developer. Developers really don't like talking to clients. They really don't like talking to clients. They hate it with a passion, and they will pay you good money to not ever talk to clients again. <laughs> It's true. Who in here is a developer? How many of y'all just, I mean, well, I hope your clients don't ever watch this video. How many of you prefer to handle communication in a less intrusive manner than a discussion? <laughs> <laughs> That's what a project manager does. Just communication. It's a lot of emails. 
Um, my favorite thing to do as a project manager, I love small teams. I've worked on a big team. I did not care for it too much, didn't jive with my you know, desire to work at 2 o'clock in the morning sometimes. Um, is the QA process on websites. If, you are a, if, you're, if you're on the web a lot, a lot of us are, a lot of us have been on, I've been on the web since I was 15. I mean, we know when a website is annoying and when it's not. Maybe I don't know how to exactly fix it, but I can say this is not what the client wanted. And I can go back to the client and go, is this really what you wanted? You know, because a lot of times they don't know and developers get a little pigeonholed. You know, get a little, what's that word? Like, Myopic. yeah. And they're like, oh, I could build this really cool feature that would do this and this and this. And okay, that's going to take like three more months. Really, they just want, and when you click the button for it to happen, right? So that's where the project manager comes in of helping with the scoping, helping with the QA. I like it. And a lot of that is, um, you know, a screenshot, this isn't working, or this font is wrong, or this placement is incorrect, or when I reduce this down to this, you know, breakpoint, it's, you know, this is shifted over. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't code. Uh, I can figure out CSS and HTML if I have to, but I really hate messing with it. It's very frustrating. Um, if, you're, if it's not an intuitive, I think coding, you can hop on Codecademy and learn how to code, but there's a difference between knowing how to replicate tasks in Codecademy and knowing how to program websites. Two different things, very different. One is coming up with like thinking through and pulling out of your wheelhouse. The other one is like spinning wheels. It's, just, it's not the same. I have a massive respect for developers. They're very, very smart people. Um, yes, sir. I use Basecamp. I prefer Basecamp. I have some teams that use Asana. We've tried using Asana at uh, CodeBrain. We ended up going back to Basecamp. It just seems to be it's visual, um, and there it has lacks a lot of features. But if you learn how to use it, there's some tweaks, some things you can do to make it really, really effective, and some workflows you can put in place with your team to make it really, really efficient. Um, like I just QA'd a site for the Plain guys. And I told them, you're going to really hate me. This is our first time to QA a project together. You're going to hate me. You're going to hate what I'm about to do to your base camp. Um, but just bear with me. We'll get through it. You'll see it, it really will work. And when we deliver that project, when we push that project to delivery, it will be done, done. And your QA list from your client will have like two or three things. Now they were like, oh, OK, well, that's not how we usually do it. Well, that's why you asked me to come help. So let's, let's give it a try. <laughs> So it's a seven page, it's like a seven page, no, it's a little bigger. I don't know, it's probably 20 pages altogether. We've had products, it's not e-commerce, but I had products and I was linking off to Amazon and stuff and it was a hot mess and they were like, no, it looks good, it looks good, it just doesn't work right. So um, we ended up with their base camp project, because I came in halfway, right? That's when I, I just started working with them two months ago. Came in, they'd already built it, they thought it was ready to go. There were like maybe 15 tasks in Basecamp for this whole project build. We have 140 in there, so we just cleared out this week. Once I went through the whole site with a fine tooth comb and said, no, no, this, this, this. And they were just like, oh my goodness. Well, you know what? That's why you have a project manager or somebody else QA your sites. That's why you don't do it yourself, because you're not going to catch it all. But we delivered that project to the client. The client was like, oh, can you tweak this and this? And um, two things, right? And so the developers like developers like that's out of scope, you know, that's out. Just fix it. <laughs> just we just fix it. They're like, oh, okay, it's like five minutes. Just fix it. Um, and then we pushed it live. It was so easy, and that's because we took the time to really. And that's project managers who can get into there and do the nitty gritty of that work. Very helpful to to teams to developers to get the get the sites pushed out. Um, but yeah, we use Basecamp for that a lot, and it's just a matter of figuring out how to make it work for your team. Asana's great. There are some features coming in Basecamp, the next iteration of Basecamp that I think are going to bridge the gap between Asana and Basecamp, which will be really fun. It'll be really fun. Any other questions? Anybody who wants to go have some drinks? <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thank